Introduction to Collision Theory. This video is going to be a very, very brief introduction to this idea. Once we're pretty much done with the chapter, we'll come back and revisit this in much more detail, but I think that it's useful to talk a bit about this here and there, um, and you need to have an introduction to that first before I use it to explain other concepts. So in this video, we'll go through and according to collision theory, identify what's gonna happen for a reaction to occur, identify what happens to the number of collisions um, if the number of collisions is increased, and identify how you can actually increase or decrease these. And again, much more detail um, in a later podcast. So collision theory says that in order to react molecules, they must collide. So if we have two molecules and we want them to do something, we must allow them to collide into each other, to form a new molecule or react in some way and rearrange to do something. Now, let's think about what would happen as we increase the rate of collisions. If we increase how often something collides, what would happen to our reaction rate? The reaction rate is gonna to have to increase because the more collisions that happen, the more frequent the collisions, the more that the reaction will occur, so the more often the reaction will occur. So then we wanna think about how we can increase the number of collisions. So in other words, what's going to make it more likely that a reaction proceeds faster? So a good analogy for this to think about the moving around particles is to think about people in a room. If you have one or two, well, let's go two. If you have two people in a very large lecture hall, let's say, they're not gonna collide into each other very often. But if we put 300 people in an empty lecture hall and we tell them to walk around, now they're gonna be colliding all over the place. And if we throw 700 people in a lecture hall and we allow them to walk around, it's gonna be constant collisions. And so this is a good analogy for looking at what happens as we change concentration. So if we want to increase the number of collisions of molecules, just like what we did with people inside a classroom, we would increase the number of particles in a given area. Or in other words, increase concentration. Now there's one other way that we can of course do this too. If we just put, let's say 15 people in a room and we tell them to walk around, in a minute they may or may not collide with each other. But we could instead tell them to run really, really fast. And remember, atoms can't see, so we would blindfold our people as well. And after a certain amount of time, if they're running really, really fast, they're more likely to collide because they're covering more distance. And so we can do that with the particles too. We can increase their speed on average. With particles, the way that we do that is by increasing the temperature. So either by increasing concentration or increasing temperature, we can increase the number of collisions. So as a quick review, in order to react, you must have molecules colliding. As you increase the rate of the collisions, the rate of the reaction is going to increase as well. And we can do this by either increasing the concentration or by increasing the temperature. 